I'm Justy Phillips and this is Margaret Woodward. We collaborate together as a published event. We're artists, writers, publishers um, based in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. And we're here on a Ruth Stephan Fellowship at the Beinecke exploring the idea of erratics and what erraticness as a condition um, of contemporary society might mean. So for a number of years we've worked on some geologic projects. We've got a big project called Lost Rock, so rocks are of great interest to us. And one day we had one of those conversations where we said to each other, if you were a rock, what sort of rock would you be? And the, the first thing that came into my head was I thought I'd be an erratic. And mostly because in geological terms, an erratic is a rock that's been transported by a glacier to another place. So it, it usually has a different composition from the bedrock around it. And by definition, it's something that's out of place and it's travelled and it can be considered wayward or straying. And so I think I had this personal identification with maybe being out of place, but definitely being liking to be in a place that's not my native territory. It's really important to say that we, we don't know what we're looking for. There is no hypothesis. Um, there is going to be uh, no hypothesis proved, I think, in this body of work. But what there is is a proposition um, of, let's say, the condition of erraticness. Now, for us to test that proposition, we've undertaken a body of research that has spanned, I guess, many broad fields. and. One of the first things we did when we came here to the to the reading room at the Beinecke was to check with multiple uh, dictionary entries for erratics to see really when was the first um, documented case of the word erratic being used. The first thing we discovered was that erratics were mentioned by uh, Chaucer in the play Troilus and Cressida. And that was, I think, around the mid-1500s, yeah. say. Yep. Um, and it was in relation to talking about the stars, the movement of the planet and the stars. So that then began us on a trajectory into astronomy. This term erratic has, has become attached to geology, but now we hear it all the time attached to things like climate, you know, erratic weather patterns or erratic behaviours. So we're trying to broaden the idea, you know, understand the origins, but broaden it away from a condition which is often seen to be a negative state as well, being unpredictable and being un uh, erratic. We originally be, um, were interested in the work of Erica Van Horn, who is an American writer who now lives in Ireland. So she is out of place living in Ireland. And a lot of her work is very um, astute, very close observations about her locale. For us, we knew as artists that we wanted to uh, engage with the materials in the library, um, I guess in a particular way. You know, we have developed a way of working that we call speculative eventing, um, where really we're working with chance encounters and constructed situations, but drawing from lived experience. So for Margaret and I, sitting in the reading room each day, the lived experience um, is one of collaboration amongst these documents, but we also have our own kind of physical presences to deal with in that space, which are quite different. So we decided that we wanted to uh, chart a route and document that through this publication. You'll see there's a kind of a, a calendar or quotidian um, aspect of this where we mark the 31 days um, of October, which has been our fellowship, the year and our names. Um, it's then divided into seven uh, streams, if you like, and these are taken from uh, mineralogical and geological terms. So things like specific gravity, heft, luster, Margaret, fracture and cleavage. We, one of the things that we're trying to do, like Margaret says, is, is build a language around erratics that would be useful to us and other people. Um, so we're using some of those terms, kind of co-opting them in a way to talk about other things. One of the other things that we, um, I guess, have been experiencing are our own physical bodies in this space. Um, so I guess to say that, you know, Margaret has... 40% hearing loss, and I have a 40% loss of function in my heart. So these are things that day to day, um, I guess, impact on the way that we use the materials or the way that we're speaking in the reading room um, or the way that we're going outside away from here and doing field work. In cleavage or fracture, um, we talk about hairline breaks in specific gravity. I think this is a good example. Um, so gravity, we're talking about buoyancy, coalescing, 
Is it uncomfortable? Is it manageable? Is it life-threatening? But this has been a way for us to document what we're looking at, how we're feeling, and as a way then of, I guess, putting those two things together and creating a new space from that. In total, so for each of those 31 days that we're here, each of us have been recording our, our journey in the library, and so this will become a 62-page document, if you like. We think of this as a publication. So it both maps the our presence in the library, but it also will refer to the documents that we've been looking at while we've been in the library. Now the cards here are sitting on a block of quarried Stony Creek granite. You know, when we first came um, to New Haven, we stayed in Guildford and we got to visit the quarry, which was really important. Um, there's also two bars, solid bars of copper. So the idea is there's a kind of archival tool here, but it's conducting information through the copper, but it's also supported by a kind of a bedrock that we find ourselves in. The field trips have been a really important component of the research as well. So, that, so as well as being here, here in the library, we've spent time out looking for and looking at erratics. Mostly they've been um, brought to our attention through people that we've met. And so it's about, I think, attuning to where we are in New England, which we didn't realise at the time was the sort of heartland for erratics. I mean, we're thinking the time frame of completing this research would be hopefully three years, could stretch to five years. I mean, in a sense, we need the work to invent itself and dictate the time frame. But there are ways to be very precise in that uncertainty as well. So like Margaret says, the, the idea of publishing works as we go is not only a kind of archival record, but it acts as a kind of tool or a technique and process for making further work. So just, you know, from the fact of making this publication with the, with the seven kind of streams of information, we're now probably thinking that the artist book um, could well be a series of seven books, um, each kind of drawing down from one of these um, linguistic themes, I guess. Mm. Um, we also would love to take that a lot further and create possibly seven um, architectural follies or spaces for reading. So I could see it's not beyond the realms of possibility that, um, you know, maybe it's a case that we could construct one of these publicly accessible architectural spaces for reading that would itself be the publication or that would hold the publication and they could be in different places all over the world. So again, it becomes an erratic work in itself. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> And, and being here in the Beinecke, that's one of the, the great things about being here is we're seeing all sorts of formats of publication. So there's the historical material, but there's also the artist's books that you know sometimes it, yeah, include objects and it, it's not just printed on paper. But we, because I guess we're artists and publishers, we're intrigued by the book forms themselves that we're seeing here. So we get very excited about you know old lettering and leather covers and some of those old books that are made from uh, vellum and uh, letterpress you know it, it the the tactile experience of being in the library is is quite phenomenal and that informs the form that our work will take we would probably make a very different sort of work if we hadn't have had this time here in the library I think.